This is Jim Davitt. He is a foot and ankle specialist at the Orthopedic and Fracture Clinic and has come by just to share a couple of tips and pearls about the posterior lower leg splint. And the first thing we were just talking about was the correct side to face the skin. We talked about a little bit with the upper extremity uh, splints. Do you sometimes see a reversal of that? Yeah, sometimes the splints come in with the, the hard side uh, against the skin, which is going to be obviously less comfortable. Yeah, that's pretty uh, abrasive there. It's rough. And they come with the, the prefab splints come with this nice soft uh, sort of webral type material against it, um, which obviously is more comfortable for the patient. Um, the other thing uh, that we see uh, sometimes is the splints when they come in and the, the foot's in what we call the Aquinas position where the, the ankle is kind of tipped down like this. Um, I think that's one of the most important things about the posterior splints is when you're putting them on um, for an ankle fracture or a foot injury or something like that, you want to make sure that that foot's right at a 90 degree angle when you're doing it. Even worse than keeping it down like this is wrapping it first with a bunch of cotton um, with the foot kind of tipped down like that and then tipping it up to try to get it straight afterwards. What that tends to do is bunch the cotton up in the front of the ankle and they can get a pretty bad ulcer over top there, particularly if they swell a lot. So if we're going to wrap the foot, you want to have it in the correct position first and splint in there. You don't start this way and then push it back. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's critical. You know, for things like Achilles injuries, which are pretty common in the, uh, in the emergency room, then it's great to have them down in a little bit of Aquinas because that just makes it more comfortable for you. We put on, when we did our initial model for the posterior splint, we did it with the stirrup right here. Is, yeah. Would you say 100% uh, of the time this is the unit that we should be doing or is sometimes is just this okay? I think for like an Achilles injury, um, even uh, an ankle sprain uh, that's not too bad, just a posterior splint is probably fine. Um, a non-displaced ankle fracture, also probably okay. Anything that needs to be reduced uh, in the emergency room needs a the stirrup on it for sure. And I think also anything that's reduced probably needs plaster as opposed to fiberglass. Uh, and how many, how many layers of plaster do you do for each one? Let's say for the posterior and the stirrup. Uh, I like between seven and ten. Um, ten so ten, ten for each. Right. Ten for this guy, yeah. ten for this guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it tends to be a heavy splint, but slows them down. That's not terrible. Can we go take a look at some plaster? You bet. Excellent. So here we've got, we're getting our padding measured out for putting on our posterior splint. So uh, important things are that uh, you want it to come out past the toes, so you can kind of fold it over, and that makes it a little bit neater. Uh, and then you want to make sure it ends below the popliteal fossa. Uh, you don't want to bend their knee and scratch in the back part of their, their knee with that. Um, so if we lay it out on the, the table, um, Usually this ends up being about six to seven layers thick in terms of the web roll. A lot of padding. Yeah. Um, the plaster heats up and uh, I've seen folks who've gotten burns. So that was six to seven six, layers yep, about of, six. of padding. Yep. Um, if you want to get fancy, um, you can uh, kind of pull the, the sides off. I notice, I notice that Janelle's uh, sort of said, that's your, yeah. why are you doing that? Uh, it makes it uh, fold a little easier around the corners of the ankle. Um, and so it just works into the splint a little bit smoother so there's not big creases okay. on the edges. So kind of a PhD level. <laughs> And what's, what size of plaster are you using for the posterior splint? This is 4 inch, um, and 4 inch I think is fine. Uh, it comes in rolls, they also come in, the 5 inches come in sheets. Okay. They're five by, thir five, 5 by 30 thick. So then the same thing, you're just rolling it out. Rolling it out, making a nice crease there at the end. Yep. And we're going to say 7 to 10 layers for the posterior yeah. splint. So usually you can get a good 4 
maybe even five out of this one. That'd be close. So if it's uneven, then you tear it off. Yeah, I tear it off at yeah. the end. It just makes it a lot easier to smooth it out um, afterwards. Lukewarm to warm. Lukewarm water. Yeah. Okay. So he's got two hands yep. going going down into the water. And it, boy, that's that's just totally saturated now. Yeah. So let it drain. Just give it a nice give squeeze. Give it a good squeeze to drain most of the water out. Uh, and then you can just pull it up straight like this. And you can run typically your two fingers on both sides. And what that does is it just kind of helps move the plaster, spread it out between, so you end up with a nice sheet like that. It looks like drywall. Yeah. It's essentially it is. And then you lay that on. You can see it's a little bit shorter now than it used to be. Um, and that's what you use. Again, the soft side goes against the skin. All right. And, and how long would that take to dry? Uh, if the water is warm, it'll be dry and probably less than seven or eight minutes. Okay. If it's cold, it can take 15, you know, 10 to 15 seconds. So the warmer the water, the quicker it yeah, dries. Absolutely. As far as you can. And usually they can't, you know, when you've got an acute injury, um, it's pretty difficult to dorsiflex their ankle much past zero. Um, so you're putting on extra padding. Yeah. Um, again, just it tends to be a little bit more comfortable for the patient. Um, you want to try to you know, minimize the amount of wrinkles that you've got in the cotton. Um, it tends to fit more comfortably the smoother it is. Um, the cotton is easy to tear. Um, And uh, so you can usually get a pretty smooth fitting splint. Uh, again, if you're using just uh, fiberglass, you're not going to need to do any of this. So if you lift your leg up, do you know do you mind kind of holding this right up there? And you can see it's pretty long, um, so we end up being able to easily fold it back like that. It's nice to have it extend out past the toes. It tends to be more comfortable for folks. Starting up right at the instep, right above the ankle with your with your wrapping. Uh, I don't know that it's a... terribly important where you start here. Okay. Um, the most important thing is that you know you get it on before it gets too hard. Um, so we're already a little bit past that. want to get fancy with it. Come out like this. So again, the uh, maybe that's like the Fred Flintstone wrap we got there on the end. This is the one true splint. <laughs> so again, you just with a relaxed knee, it's usually pretty easy just to kind of have them hold their leg. This is my, this is probably a little bit on the long side. It doesn't need, doesn't need to be that long. It probably should be right there, just so their toes are supported. Okay. Um, just provides for a lot more comfort afterwards. And you pref you prefer plaster over fiberglass? If it's if there's been a reduction, yes. If there's not been a reduction, I don't know that it makes too much difference. Okay. Um, the plaster is going to mold a lot better and be a lot more comfortable than a fiberglass one will. Particularly, you know, if you've had to do a reduction, it's going to swell much more um, than if you don't. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Jim. All right. That's a fine feeling splint. <laughs>